So. Yeah. All right, there we go. So. Fuck. Okay. So I guess it. Okay, so I guess one of the buttons that I push turns off my YouTube stream. Damn it. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, I got to call to let you know, man. You, you, you stopped streaming. So. Okay. <laughs> that was it. Man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, not a problem. Bye. Okay, so. What button am I hitting that stops streaming? I'm just going to work this out right now. I am giving up. I am giving up on doing this show until. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to control it. Okay. All right, so I'm catching back up. Somebody called me. I, I, I don't, I, I'm trying to work out. I, I don't know what I do that stops the stream. So we change the system around, right? So it's a little better because I'm smarter at this now. But I think I know how to solve this problem because what I'm doing is like, I'm using like the control button to switch between streams. Just like you use control X or control Z, or any of that other stuff to copy and paste. I know what the solution is from now on. I'm just going to hold down the A button because there is nothing that's A, Y, A, U, A. So I think I have that problem solved. Listen, this is week 10 now. I didn't, I couldn't even work that out in week one. So, all right. You know, you just got to keep getting better at stuff. So let's see. Let's see how many subscribers. We had 160 before. And I'm at 80 now. Stream health is good. Streaming seems to be good. I, I don't mute. I, I'm not muting anything. My mic's on. I, I don't know what button it is. It's okay. Because today I had a clever idea. I realized I was using the control button to switch. I can use any buttons I want. So from now on, I'll just use a ba 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 ba, and it won't conflict with Microsoft or anything. Oh my God, so much work. It's a good thing I'm being paid and getting high and YouTube is free. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think about it in terms of a business strategy plan, it's not that bad. <clears throat> oh, Project Grow House, okay. Listen, in terms of Project Grow House, I am absolutely working on Project Grow House. So let me tell you about Project Grow House and where I'm at with Project Grow House. Um, so for the last, okay, so 18 months ago, I sold a bunch of videos to vendors, right? My videos were starting to get popular. I was starting to get good. So I sent out emails to all the vendors. I collected all this product, all this money. The Turbo Clone video was the second to last and the most comprehensive sort of using all of this that uh the bush the bushmaster and turbo clone with the roots was the most comprehensive video i ever did so it took me 18 months to get there i have two more videos to make for the bushmaster which is literally two weekends so i am all caught up I have so nothing to do. I'm going to focus on my commercials so I can put commercials nationwide like I do locally in my market and I can do them for other stores. And um, I'm going to uh, finish those two videos. And that's sort of like everything I have. So Project Grow House, because it involves the vendors and I have to have a house and we have to be prepared to do this. So Project Grow House, uh, I am like really, really close to going out and buying a house and doing this with the vendors. Like I got eight, 18 months of 40 hours a week in the store, 
80 hours a week making videos, 20 to 30 hours a month doing tech support calls. I do a tech support call a day. There's been a lot going on for the last for the last 18 months. So in terms of broad project grow house, I am super excited. I mean like this stuff's so cheap, it's so easy to do. I am super excited for Project Grow House to come back again. Okay. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. Hmm. Andrew, you are super funny. Oh, oh, I know. Okay. This picture here with two things because I wanted to get to the Andrew pictures. That's Ralph. And my dog, he's still being lazy. That dog. Ugh. So, wait, I touch buttons. Stop streaming. Okay. All right, so I'm still streaming. Okay. I got to watch that button. Okay, so I can't do it like that. So I should probably do it like this. Put that up. All right. Just solving problems. Just solving problems. Solving problems moving forward. Um, Club 85 on video production. Okay. So we went through the, uh, we went through the close up. Ah, see one of my buttons does. Okay. So we went through the close up of, we went through the close up of these picks. We determined using that troubleshooting guard light that it was a, uh, that it's too much light. And it's not just too much light on the plant. The other thing I wanted to point out was that there's not enough plant. So look at all those empty holes. Could this be the right amount of light? Well, if you add 33% more plant canopy to this picture, yes, it might be the right amount of light. So it's tough to know. Now we know there's too much light. I mean, that's a given. You just look at those things and you know they're not going anywhere. But then from there, what do you do about it? Do you raise the light? Well, even if you raise the light, you leave all those squares empty. If you leave all those squares empty, where are you going to put the bud? So I don't know if the light's far enough away until we fill up that extra space. Now, in terms of that extra space, let's talk about that extra space because, as always, my favorite, my favorite one to show you is this. This is what six plants looks like. He took three plants out before sending me this picture. This is the same garden with nine plants. He just filled it up. I mean, okay, just, you know, just, you know, look at that. And then look at that some more because I switched the wrong one. Now look at that, right? Look at, I mean, like, let, let's just talk about, like, listen, there's, there's some squares here. This one here, uh, I'm not sure, but there's one here, this one here, a couple right here, one, two right here. Uh, then when we, you know, again, when we go and we look at this one, we're like, oh, we should probably get a tool. We should probably like, there's all these here and there's all these here and there's all this right here and this stuff here and this whole section right here and all of these right here and these ones right I'm just saying that when we go from here to here just just a, there's a big difference and there nothing changed not the light not anything else all he did was increase plant count by 50 percent boom we come down you know what I mean like here's here's the whole garden This is a couple weeks later, but you can see they're already like the canopy is already not even. They're already not even. There's like a couple little different things going on. You got to watch for that. That's part of it. Like it's tough to go into the second trellis until like the third week of flower when you really kind of have everything worked out. Um, okay, let's see. Was there any other new pictures in this one? Okay, 10, 
Okay, there we go. So here's one of the plants. Now this is untrellised, so it's taller. And one of the things that I always tell you guys is you gotta watch the legs, man. You gotta watch her legs. Look at the legs down here. From my perspective, this plant was grown too big. You gotta watch those legs because technically if you were to uh, make a, if you were to make a trellis out of this, so let's say you made like a trellis out of this and you know, you did that thing where you get a couple little grids going. If you were to pull this in a trellis, you would also have to physically lower the plant. So this plant would physically get shorter, right? All of these tops would physically be lowered. You would physically lower all these tops, right? And if you remember back when we were talking about this picture at the start of the show, the whole thing we were talking about with, with this guy here was he had a tall pot, a short ceiling, a high hood, and he was going to have to switch that hood for something more friendly like a T5 sized hood. Remember how we were talking about that? Because it all comes down to that trellising nonsense. Um, here again, trellis video. Okay, so just so you know, I was at 160 viewers before I dropped the stream. Now I'm at 130. So there's my punishment for not getting it right. Because if everything doesn't go right, it's always a fucking problem, right? You got to get all aspects. And it's not just in, it's not just in growing cannabis. It's in running a live stream too. We don't need... We definitely don't need this plant to go any longer because it's already up against the wall. So we're going to top these plants over here because they're long enough and it fills up that corner. In fact, it's so long, I'm going to pull it back over this, put it under this like that, and then these will have to turn up. Oh, See, I just love this video. Like, remember what under, we did? We took this plant over under that was too big for the space. For the trellis a little now. And that's not even, this is full size. Trellis now. Boom, look at that plant. I mean, the light is like okay, right so above the it. Plant that we've trimmed. The light's like right there above it, right? That's that little tiny tent. Uh, I wish, there's the light, right? There's the light right there. You know what I mean? Like that plant is 10 inches from the light. If the plant doubles in size because you've got eight weeks to go and flower, you better, you better pull it really far from the light. You know, I was, I was literally like eight inches from the light and now I'm like two and a half feet and not just two and a half feet either. The trellis is, the, the canopy is much thinner. So when all the little, when, when you know, when all the little, the little branches turn up, they'll all become 18 inch tops in the space. And they'll finish two feet from the light. That's why I tell you guys, this is all relative. Um, it is all relative to, to what we're talking about in terms of, it's the same light. However, I thinned the canopy, I widened it out, I get canopy control, right? I get canopy consolidation. I consolidate and control my canopy into something that is very much. And then when you look at something like, um, uh, I just always love showing you guys this. Uh, then when you get your canopy under control, Then when you get your canopy under control like this, oh, not even that one, not even that one, this one. 
Look at that. Look at that canopy under control. That's a good looking canopy. But two and a half weeks later, I mean, you can see it's sort of getting out of control again. However, I just want to point out that three weeks later, they're going to get bigger. You can see they get bigger. But I mean, even if the, the one side, even if this, even if this side runs away from this side, I mean, it's not going to be that much, right? I mean, this side's going to get eight inches taller. But then, I mean, he's got, I mean, this guy's, let's see, what's this guy running? Oh, yeah, this guy's running 600 watts, right? So this guy's running 600 watts. And when we look at the distance between this here and here, oh, come on. You know what I mean? That's a seven-foot tent. Let's just do the math. It's a it's a seven foot tent. Uh, I don't like that. Let's do this a little bigger. This is a seven foot tent. That's a seven. Nope, it was bold. So bold, seven foot tent or whatever. No, I'm gonna do this right. All right seven foot tent the one foot light one foot bucket so that's five foot left okay boom file save as for a save boom just like that now we go back to this the nice picture okay so we know, oh, let's, not even that one, not even that one. I don't even want that one. I want, uh, I want this one. Because this is the one that totally shows you the math. So this is the math. So we know we have one foot worth of legs. And we know we have about one foot worth of canopy. So let's go back to 4A. And now we know one foot bucket. We'll just, uh, we got one foot bucket. We'll just put a strike through that. And continue on so we got a one foot bucket we got one foot legs we got one foot legs and we have one foot canopy so we know we have seven minus four so we have three feet space boom look at that we got three foot worth of space all I'm saying is now that we know now that we have all of this put together and and you know really I'm gonna say I'm really gonna say that that really doesn't even look like three that, that the one foot bucket one foot legs and one foot canopy I, I I would really like to say that from here I believe we have a three and a half foot space I think we're at 40 42 inches that's 40 or 42 inches away from the light so I just want to point out that even if this side versus this side if this side gets eight inches taller than this side all i'm saying is it doesn't matter that much 42 to 36 34 listen you're so far away from that light and everything looks so good frankly if this section right here started to get burnt you would know that your light's still too close and if they look good you're in the zone I mean that's really the that's really the parts and pieces that go into this picture. Okay, so I think I had one more. Oh, here we go. Okay, let's go through these pictures. Save. Okay. Check them out. Check those beauties out. All right. How many are there? I don't know. Let's see how many there are. Well, apparently, there are two plants. That's a humidifier, I think, right there. There are two plants. Let's just keep looking at this story. Yeah, there are two plants. And I remember this call. This person was telling me about Oh my God, I got so many tops. I got so many tops. Oh, I'm just winning. 
There's so many tops, it's painful. I remember this call. Okay, now we are heading into flower. I can tell by the change in the light color. Ah, oh, so many tops going into flower. And I got to tell you, I think this guy had like a 600 watt, like five feet away, like at the top of the tent, because this grower decided he was going to listen to me. Not everything, but just about the light. And what was he going to listen to me about the light? That it shouldn't be too far away. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying it shouldn't be too far away, but it shouldn't be too far away from, from like 14 plants. 587, you're on with the grow boss. Am I doing something wrong? Is the mic off? What's going on? I don't know, man. I, I, I oh. never got a chance to catch your show yet this morning. I just knew oh. that you were live, and I wanted to get a quick question in for you. Okay. Um, just, wonder, just wondering, there's this uh, company that came out a while ago called, uh, called uh, Modular Hydro, and they're doing something that I've been thinking about for years but never really tried. And that was placing air stones at the bottom of your soil pots uh, throughout your grow. These guys are doing it a little bit different than what I was thinking. They're pretty much saturating their soil 24-7 in water and then using the air stones to hydrate that water. I was thinking about doing it just like a conventional grow, air stones at the bottom of the pot. What do you think? Would that just be kind of counterproductive drying the soil out too soon and you know oh i think i've seen this one or... okay i think i've seen this so let me just ask you because this is this is always my big sneaky move all right i remember seeing this look at this guy does yeah. it grow that plant bigger okay listen everybody including me shows you a tells you that if you use whatever it is they say your shit's gonna grow bigger so let's just say that nobody puts out an ad that says our shit grows average. Okay, so let's just start there. Yeah. Now this guy's clean cut, short hair, gray, a little bit older, thin. He's got his glasses. Oh, he's got his glasses on his shirt. He looks trustworthy. Um, he looks like he's going to tell us some important shit. He goes over some buckets. He goes over and I've got the modular hydro video up. So... Yeah. So here's the system. So he's he's going to do something. So let me ask you. I know what this guy tells me he thinks it's worth. Let me ask you, what do you think? What do you, sir, think this system is worth? Do you think it's worth 10% 10, 10 more? 15% more? I, I honestly, I, from what I'm thinking, I don't think it's going to be doing anything except maybe speeding up the growth rate. I don't think it's going to produce bigger yields or anything like that. I was just thinking maybe if you can, if it shaved the week off or because hydro definitely is quicker, you know, okay. tends to be. So but, that, that's, the, that's but kind of what he was leaning towards. That so would like, be, you know, hydro true. is, hydro is better. And that's fine. Hydro is better. I say that hydro is quicker. So you're not saying it yields better quality. You're saying it yields quicker. Let me show you this picture. Um, this is a picture I have in I have in gardens and grow rooms. And what I show you is, is a bucket of cocoa, a bucket of cocoa above some hydro ton with a little bit of water in the bottom. So it's not that the system is unheard of. Okay, so it's a reasonable system. That's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is, and what I'm really suggesting is, have you ever seen a full-grown cannabis plant? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, on, on, a, on a scale of, you know, like cannabis plants, what's the biggest you've ever seen? How big is it? Tell me. Oh, maybe 10, 12 foot. Dude, that's a big cannabis plant, right? It's, it's more okay. of a tree, yeah. yeah it's growing right. in the back of an old half-ton truck box. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what's the biggest indoor plant you've ever seen? Uh, maybe five foot. It's mainly because of the room, right? And you, right. You don't want right. to, you know, good growers have two big problems, right? Plants right. too big. Women how, many how, many people would it, <laughs> how many people would it take to put your arms around it? Oh, two. Three. Okay. 
Okay, that's what I was getting at. But like I say, that's not that's not that's not a proper to me. That's just you're just growing outdoor plants indoors when you're doing shit like that. Right? I'm more of a, <laughs> more along the scrunk. Okay, but okay, and I, I see your point. But I just want to describe to you that cannabis is a 12 week process, and I want everybody else to get the idea that these plants get big. So when we look at the video of this guy, I mean, does this system work? Um, I mean, I suppose I suggest something similar to it here in my book. All I'm suggesting is there comes this point when you talk about a five foot cannabis plant and you go, how would you ever fit this nonsense? How would you do this for a five foot plant? It doesn't make sense. It's not, um, it's not, it, it may be great for a house plant that somebody wants to do, but this is nonsense when the picture I'm showing you is a five gallon bucket. Oh, wait, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, exactly. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is a five gallon bucket with a 10 inch pail, right? Like a 10 inch bucket lid. And all I'm suggesting is yeah. that guy's product looks like it's, that guy's bucket looks like it's this size. Clone X, root maximizer. So one gallon, five gallon. Now, these are just to give you a perspective of what to grow in. Now, that's not entirely accurate because you would grow a bigger plant in the five gallon bucket. However, when we go back when we go back here to paint um, let me just uh, let me open this up I just always want to point out again that if you're going to okay if you're going to do it in something that's that size so here's this guy He's showing you something that size. I'm suggesting that a five foot around plant would require a five gallon bucket. However, if you're going to do smaller plants and smaller buckets, that's fine. But just understand that you're going to need 15 plants for the same space. Or, you know, he's gonna need eight plants. They're going to have to be smaller. So, the cost of the yeah. system, the addition of the heat, the quirkiness of it, the height of it, versus i mean what we're talking about is well hang on a second what we're talking about is uh hello Hello. <clears throat> Hang on. Oh, there you are. There I am. Okay. Son I of a it. bitch, that mic just <laughs> failed. I don't know what to say about it. Okay. Am I streaming? Mic's hey, on. before, before, sorry, sorry to cut you off, buddy. Um, before, I know you dropped the call kind of quick there to, to answer, but I also want to know, you're looking on your computer there. Are you on some forms, man, that I can, I, I don't know where to find you at on the computer. I don't, I don't get website. involved. I don't get involved in any of the forms. I don't get involved in any of it because, well, it's an enormous amount of work. And I noticed that everybody on the forum is sort of, they seem to just, it seems to be a bunch of bad. I looked for one minute years ago and I have, I have really no okay. desire to go on anybody else's show because for me, it two hours of uninterrupted time, I'm not very good at sharing. Yeah. So, plus I'm in my hydro store. Like I get to walk into my store and literally between right here at my command post, this is my command post. I get to smoke pot. This is my work desk. I get to smoke here, pull stuff off my shelf, give you examples. So all I'm saying is like, this works pretty good for me. Okay. Um, right oh, so that air, that that modular hydro, again, like 
I was just using them as an example for, for somebody that, another company that has actually come out with similar idea. Maya, what I was thinking was basically not to keep the water in it, keep it like a regular pot, you know, 10 gallon, 15 gallon pot, and throw two eight inch air stones at the bottom of it. Cover that thing with, uh, you know, your perlite, get the cocoa in there, and away you go, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so let's just you be think clear. That wait, 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 wait. Or just be counter. Let's just be clear. Pick your bucket size. What size bucket did you say you were going to use? Uh, uh, 15 gallon. Okay. So what we're talking about here is you were, I'm suggesting like a plant so big around it takes two people in a five gallon bucket or a plant small enough that goes in one of these like in the hydro system that's up on the screen. So you're talking about a 15 yep. gallon bucket. But a moment ago you were saying like smaller plants. So if you're going to do a big well, system. Well, no, I was just saying what he, what he was using. What, what that okay. guy was using as but a let's demonstration. Just, right? Let's just extrapolate what this guy was using. If you grow this plant, so outdoors with a, with a 10 foot plant, they were in a 100 gallon bucket. Indoors, you're going to get a 5 foot plant in a 5 gallon bucket. If you do indoors with a 10 gallon yep. bucket, you're going to get an 8 foot plant. It's going to be a huge plant. Now, is the system worth it? Well, I don't know, but I, I just want to make sure you understand that if you have a 15 gallon bucket, I mean, you're going to grow a plant that's hanging two feet all the way around over the bucket. I mean, the plant's going to be four people around. So is it worth it? You know, it's hard to water big fucking plants, dude. They're a lot of work. And I'm not sure if whatever this, pro whatever your idea is with bubbling more water, I'm not sure if it's worth it. It is, it sounds like an enormous well, amount Well, not of bubbling water. the water. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to leave standing water in there. I just want to water it like a regular, like a regular plant. But all the time, there's air stones in the bottom constantly pumping oxygen through that soil. I don't want any standing water sitting there, how does, not like but much that's, of a hydro tunnel. That's what I don't understand is how does the, how does the, <clears throat> I'm sorry. So let's just, let's use an example, which is probably the wrong example. Yeah. <clears throat> it's summer. You've just got out of the pool. You're sitting on a bench and you fart. The fart gets trapped between your butt cheeks. You're going to have a decision to make because the air is just sitting there. It's just trapped. I mean, you know it's there. You can feel it <laughs> blowing up your butt cheeks. Now, you can lean back and let it go forward and it's going to come right up through you. You can lean forward and it's going to come right up through the back. But once it starts traveling out, if you were to continue to fart, it's not going to bubble to the surface and start coming out of your the front you see what i'm saying it's just going to find a path to the yeah. outside so I, you keep saying like yeah. you're going to oxygenate the soil i don't understand how putting an air stone with no medium now if you put a little bit of a water media okay so let's say you have uh this much hydro this much perlite you add a little bit of soil and you fill the water up to so it's touching the bottom of the soil but once it goes to the dry part, it's going to scoot right out of your butt like a fart. Okay, yeah. That's what I mean by, I really All don't, right. you guys think a lot. I mean, like, I, I know it sounds like a great idea, but you're going to have a 15-gallon bucket. I just can't imagine what what it's worth. And even if it did, I mean, you're going to get it. Yeah. The air stones they sell are, I mean, like, those round ones are 4-inch, 6-inch, 10-inch. And the 10 inch one is a 3 8 line. Remember that pump I showed you earlier? That 10 inch, you're going to start running air pumps. You're going to heat the whole thing up. I, I can't imagine what it's worth. I mean, just not worth it, yeah. I don't see anywhere where, where yeah. there's the value in, in, that, uh, in that particular move. I don't see anywhere where, where for that effort you're going to, and like I said, what, 10%? Listen, if you want 10% more, either add more light, veg a little longer, do something, add microbes, but I can't imagine what this is going to net you. See what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 no, I hear you. That's why I, I wanted to ask you last week about it. I totally forgot. I was the guy that called in about the issue with uh, my 5x10 tent vacuuming in on me with the two duct AC. Did you work I ended it out? up calling the manufacturer. 
I, I ended up calling the manufacturer on it because I did everything. I sealed up the intake. I tried everything to get that thing not to vacuum that tent shut. And uh, once I talked to the manufacturer, they said basically the same thing you said. It's for spot treatment. It's it's not an actual. It will create a vacuum, even though they claim that it won't. It does create a vacuum. So I'm in the midst of. Uh, I'm a, I'm a plumber up here in, in Canada, so I just got a line on a mini split. I'll put a new condenser in it for 800 bucks, and I'll have a new mini split going in soon. So, <laughs> okay, I, pre I appreciate the advice, though. So. Yes, sir. Hang on a sec. Uh, let me mini split AC. Um, I, I just I just want to bring it to your attention. I know you're I know you're a guy that likes to do some work here. But I just want to show you that um, mini split ACs. Oh no no no! Mini split ACs on eBay. I mean, I don't even know what to say about this because it's six hundred and ten. It's six. I mean, they're six sixty nine. You can buy a mini split. Oh Toshiba. shit! Yeah, the one I'm using is like. <laughs> Yeah, the one I'm using is much bigger. That's for sure. We take care of a host. Yeah, like they're probably worth about three k or something. Yeah, they they are so cheap. I don't know how to justify buying them from my distributor. I mean, these things are so cheap, and they're do it yourself. It's crazy. Yeah. And I have to. Yeah, build I might one look in the into store. that actually after. After I get off the uh, phone with you, I might check that out on eBay. I never even thought to check eBay. I just, I just figured that I'd look around the city here and see what I can find. I ended up finding the one that was crapped out. The condenser needs to be replaced, but it's like a three thousand dollar mini split. So I figured it'd be a good grab, but I'll check out eBay, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much for the call. All right. So there's some basics. Um. Yeah, there are just some basics that you got to know. You got to use the equipment properly. Ugh. My job is so difficult. Getting stuff from my store and talking about it. Showing you videos while I'm getting high. So difficult. And, like, you know, I know there's a bunch of other shows out there, and they all have their information, and that's great. Um, I'll just tell you, like, I have, I really have no desire to report on the legality of cannabis in Las Vegas or across the nation. I really have no need to tell you anything about anything that anybody else could tell you. I'm the only one that talks about growing the way I do in terms of a yield, light, space ratio that goes over the pictures the way I do. That's why I really tried to call this Cannabis 101 now because now you just hear me going through the pictures, the same things over and over, people calling in with the questions, me just doing the damn thing. And <clears throat> it just takes a while for you guys to hear the same thing over and over from a couple of different angles. And then you guys sort of all put it together. So let me see what... uh. I have more, I have, I have, everybody sends me so many pictures. All right. So take a look. Okay, actually, I think this is the, um, I think, now, I know I bitch about LEDs, but I think this one actually, I think this Garden one actually. Rescue. And this is a show where I go over gardens, what's right and what's wrong with them, so you can get a better feel for where you're at and possibly what you might do to be better. Except in this case, this Garden Rescue is gonna be a little different because this guy, because this guy is knocking it out of the park with his kind K3 600 LED. Check that out. 
Now, before we get too into the details, I thought I'd give you a little backstory on this garden. See, these seeds came out of a bag that could have been anywhere up to 15 years old. The seeds all came from good bud, but... And that's my point. Here's a guy who's doing a good job in an LED. But the next set of pictures I'm going to show you is why I complain about people that are doing LEDs. Because, I'm not sorry, not the people. Although, I do complain about the people. Um, I'm just suggesting that that they, they do work. Oh, I touched my eye after touching the bud. They do work. However, here's a guy who's clearly having some problems with LEDs. And this was... This was his, right, that's his plants. And this is his light. Woo! So I'm just saying like, you look at this video and you look at how much plant, how much canopy this guy has in his and how far the lights are, are away. And then you look at this picture and you're like, damn, that's why I tell you guys LEDs kill shit. I mean, he's got a lot of fucking light over very little plant. That's a thing. But LEDs are fantastic. CMHs, LECs, HIDs, they're all fantastic. Bringing them all into my store. In fact, if you were watching from yesterday, I've already started a little bit of my theory about doing better in the store. Look, so I've, oh, oh, here, you know what? I've opened up some boxes, right? I started lining up some product. There's T5s that I sell. I've started, uh, Hello? Yes. Yes. Hold on a sec. Hydroponics. Um, I open in like 20 minutes. We open at 11 today. 11 to 6. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right. 269. 269. Yellow. Hey, you're on the grow boss. Yeah, I just I was calling to let you know your mic was messed up, man. Fuck, Appreciate I, that. I couldn't hear nothing you were saying. Uh, <laughs> fuck. And like it's sitting right here and it keeps Okay, so next by by next week I will have one cord that goes from and I won't have this brand of mic anymore. I uh, this is a blue ice mic and this is the second one. I returned I bought this new one. I put the old one back in the box and returned it. Fuck them. And then now this one, I'm going to put back in the box and I'm going to return it again. Fuck blue ice again. I mean, 
I'm not, I mean, it's a, I don't know what to say. So I'm going to have one cord that goes all the way back to my computer, and I'm going to do it like that. All right, thanks so much. Fuck. Yeah, I love the show, man. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate you calling in. Yeah. Equipment failure is brutal. And I try. I mean, it's the same advice I give you guys. You have to have the right equipment. Like these Logitech cameras, I have five. I replace one every other week. After every four shows, I've been... Phew! Ah. After every four shows, I've had to replace one. Every two weeks, I've had to replace one of my cameras. Phew! Oh, man. Man, mic on, check, check. Oh, so, how do people on the radio never, how do people on the radio never sneeze? Ah, Howard Stern does like a four hour show for a hundred years now. Oh my God. So much responsibility. 910, what's wrong? What am I doing wrong? Does the show off? What happened? What did I do wrong? Oh, nothing, man. I got a quick question for you. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, well, let's make it simple. I'm growing in soil. I'm noticing some slight deficiencies now. They all have the same deficiencies, all the plants. But how long does it typically take for soil to recover? Because I know it's a slower process. Well, if it's a, if it's a nutrient deficiency... Anywhere from three days to never. See, some nutrient deficiencies you never recover from. For instance, the top growth is the bottom growth sacrifices itself for the top growth. So the bottom growth, boom, bottom growth sacrifices itself for the top growth never recovers. You burn the leaf tip, yeah. never recovers. So there's a lot of things that you never recover from. So it depends on what it, which deficiency it is. Uh, well, I'm not an expert or whatever, but I kind of narrowed it down to, I'm thinking, a uh, phosphorus deficiency. I'm in, going on close to three week, third week in flower, and I just, I only fed them really for the first time, like, a week and a half ago. They've been running on their soil, basically, for the two months until I actually fed them. I didn't feed them until I started noticing some deficiencies. Uh, Notice some purpling stems first, so I waited until the soil dried out. So I gave it some cow mag, thinking that might be it, it might be some mag. Uh, it didn't work. Waited until the soil dried out again, and then uh, gave it some maxi bloom, about 450 ppm total. That's with my water coming out at 120 ppm, and I didn't notice a difference either. So I waited again for the soil to dry. That was about five days, and then. I hit them with some recharge, some microbes and stuff, and waited again, and then now um, I hit it once again after that with close to 1,000 ppm, and it didn't burn the tips or nothing. The plant's still growing. It's growing great, but I just noticed the leaves, the purpling in the, I don't know if the plants are super, super hungry. I don't think I overwatered because all three plants show the same thing. They're all, it's not different. They're all the same purple stems. Uh, petioles are purple. Well, the stems are streaked kind of purple. And <clears throat> the bottom leaves at first are super dark, almost like dark green purple. But I guess I kind of ignored them a little bit too long. I'm not sure, but I was wondering how long does it typically take for it to kind of, for the new leaves to basically <coughs> take over or grow, grow in some still in the early phase of flower. So I know I'm still, there'll be a little bit of growth still, so. Okay, now I got you. I got you. Okay, I, I just wanted to point something out and 
Um, give me one sec. So I know soil takes okay. longer. I remember you mentioned it could take up like a week or two or whatever yes. since it's the slowest. Uh, yes, sir. So here, my question And I've never is, really had a deficiency like this before, so I don't know how long it takes for it to recover. Okay, so page 123 is my troubleshooting guide. And the question is, are the leaves, are the leaves dark green with cupping or folding? And then the answer is yes, and it says magnesium deficiency. However, you can get a magnesium deficiency for two reasons. One of the reasons is you have too much light. So, tell me about your light. How much light do you have? Currently, it's 400. H, H -I -D it's or T5? Four HID, LED, or T5? Uh, it's two LEDs. I've actually called you before, but it's two LEDs, total 400 watts. Oh, that's how much electricity they draw? Yep, 200 what's, each. What's They're called the, 450s, but they only draw 200. Okay, so what's the space that you have two LEDs in? It's in a two by four, six feet tall. If, if, if your LED claims it's 400 watts worth of light, and I claim that a 400 watt light should go in a two by four, the first thing is you have double the light you should, according to what I think. So you have twice the light. So if it's very far away, maybe you're not burning it with the light. But if those lights are closer than- it's two than lights. Light. It's two lights, so it's right. 200 watts each. There's right. So it's two separate lights. So it's yes. not one giant unit being down. So it's kind of spread yeah. up. But, it, but, but it's actually, it's not, okay. So that's what you said, but I think I, you missed what I said. What I said was if your 200 watt light is truly a 400 watt, and a 400 watt requires a two by four space, but you have two lights in that two by four space, then you by definition have twice the light you should. Yeah, but I'm not, but I'm not claiming that my lights should are equivalent to 400. I, I know better, 200 is 200, so they're 400 total. I mean, okay. there's no two ways about it. I mean, it's 400 watts okay. coming out. I mean, I've, I've, I've grown with these lights before. I, I put them pretty far away. When I start flower, they're about, three three and a half feet away and i let them kind of stretch into it so, so but i've never old, had this how, decision how old are your plants at the moment currently they would be uh i put them in the flower when they're about <clears throat> seven weeks veg well seven weeks from seed basically seven weeks from seed and now they're on day 15 or 60 yeah, about day 16 of flower right now so that's four weeks two, so almost like four two weeks and a half months. A month for seed. Well, you said seven weeks and three weeks. That's 10 weeks. We take out four weeks for the seed. That's six weeks. So you've got like a four or six week old plant. How tall are they? Well, I got them uh, under a scrog. Well, they're scrogged out, but even under the scrog, the canopy currently it's close to two feet at least. Okay. I haven't measured it because I don't look at the plants every day and measure it okay. and shit, but I okay. mean, they're a good two feet tall. Okay, so we're in the zone of where you should be with those lights. Okay, I feel better about it. Like, like I feel, I feel more comfortable with you, your lights and that space without having a picture. I like the way you describe how you treat them. Okay. I feel more comfortable about that. The canopy, like the, uh, the canopy is completely full. They're growing vertically straight up now and they're still growing. So that's what's telling me. I don't think it's over watering because they're not, they're full, they're growing, they're getting wider and bigger. All, and all the plants are just showing the same exact deficiency. I don't know if I fucking just starved them because I didn't give them anything. They were just in straight soil <laughs> for two months until they got anything. And it was three plants. So it's basically <laughs> three plants and five gallons each. I don't know if it just fucking ate through it. I'm not sure. I don't even know how yeah. much is in the fucking soil to begin with. But I don't know. But I think I might have just, since I starved them and the deficiency showed kind of slowly... And now I'm kind of trying to, I was wondering how long would it take to recover if, if I'm correct, I don't know if I am. Well, I would like to point out that, uh, that from my perspective, uh, 
you've got the right length veg, you got the right size plants, you have the right description, you have everything. I would like to suggest that in this rare case, <clears throat> and I am saying that it is a rare case, in this rare case for you, sir, I believe you stand a chance of having underfed them. Okay. I mean, you did none. That's a bit extreme. Now, you were in a five-gallon bucket, so you had six weeks worth of nutrients. So you're in week seven. So I would like to suggest that you very well may have <laughs> the third guy in the history of me doing this that hasn't fed enough. So, I would like to suggest for you that you should add 250 ppm CalMag every time. There's, there's CalMag in the Maxi Bloom I have. It already has CalMag in it. Nope. Do I add more to it? Yep. I would start, I would say that the first 250 that you add. Now, interestingly enough, I'd like to tie this into the first caller that we had, or caller earlier in the show. <clears throat> I define the difference between additives, supplements, and nutrients. Do you know the difference between them, sir? Yeah. Define them. Tell me. Well, nutrients are basically the macros and micronutrients, mostly the macros, the NPKs, let's say. Okay. The CalMag will be secondary. The CalMag and the sulfur will probably be secondary. They're still important, not as important, but they need to be there. And it typically would fix a certain problem that I might have. Like if you show up a CalMag problem, you give a CalMag. If it doesn't, you don't give it really much of anything, maybe little bits of everything. And then as additives are like a little bit of bonus, which I don't really do. To me, an additive, I just give recharge, which is basically the microbes and the humic acids and the, the shit to kind of break down the soil and kind of, you know, like uh, <clears throat> work on the roots a little bit. That's basically all I add. And I just used to use Fox Farms. Now I switch to... Uh, maxi bloom because it's a lot cheaper. I was like, fuck it, might as well just do a one simple <laughs> all in one type shit instead of mixing bottles and fucking with stupid stuff like that. Okay, but, so let's. Uh, yeah. I'm going to narrow that down a little for you, and I'm going to say you just said all in one. So let's talk about a nutrient. A nutrient is any of the minerals that come off the NPK. For instance, sea kelp is not a mineral. Sea kelp is ground up sea kelp. Might there be minerals in it? Yes, but there could also be enzymes. Enzymes are not on the periodic table of elements. So, from my perspective, nutrients are any of the minerals. That includes all 16, NPKs and the micros. And I know what you said, Cal, Mag, and Mag. Cal and Mag are the two micros that are considered almost macros. And you are correct, sir. Calcium, nitrogen, and mag, wait, silica, nitrogen, and magnesium. Silica, nitrogen, and magnesium make up 80, 85% of the minerals on earth, like in the topsoil. Silica, mag, and nitrogen is 85% of what's available. <clears throat> so what I would like to suggest is that all of the nutrients, all 16 of them, these are minerals, they come off the NPK, they're, the, they're nutrients. Anything that you add to solve a problem from those nutrients, from the same mineral, like a bottle of CalMag. That's a supplement. Supplements are still minerals, but you add a supplement to solve a problem. So your nutrients are working, your nutrients are working, you're a little shy on the mag, boom, supplement. Because if you add more nutrients, you're gonna add, I mean, think about it. If there are 16 things in the bag and you add more nutrients, you're not getting more mag. You're getting more of 16 things, right? And so, all you're looking for is mag. So now when you do the individual item, this becomes a supplement. An additive makes a good grow better. When the plant is growing well and it runs out of something, that's when, that's when you give it an additive because now the law of minimum is in effect. When the law of minimum is in effect and the plant is running out of something, whether it be CO2 or light, or all of these things can be additives. They don't have to be nutrients. They don't have to be minerals. That's why you would add mag, CalMag, because there's actually a couple of different products, right? There's Magic Cal, Cali. Fuck. Hey. No, no, I, I, I oh. hear you now. I hear you now. Okay. So that's why. Yeah, I, I, I have CalMag. I, I have a separate little bottle of Botanicare CalMag, which I used with my Fox Farm earlier before. 
that I used to use. But with this grow, I haven't fed them shit except for CalMag once and then this Maxi Bloom after I thought originally I only gave it CalMag because I don't want to give it food because I, I wanted to see if maybe it was a mag issue so I could narrow it down. If I, if I gave it everything, I wouldn't know what it was. I'm like, fuck it, I'll give it CalMag. If the purple goes away, then it was mag. But it didn't, so kind of learned from that too. But I, but I do have a bottle of uh, <clears throat> that shit. I think the only thing I want to add to it is maybe some sweet. That's about it, but I don't want to like get too in deep with buying a bunch of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> one bottle of Grow, one bottle of Bloom, one bottle of CalMag, one bottle of Sweet, one bottle of Microbes. Yeah, I have all that except for the Sweet part. So the Sweet is CalMag. Maxi Bloom has. Your Sweet is CalMag, Well, right? the Sweet Mag Sulfur. Right, it replaces sweet is Mag the CalMag. Sulfur, right? It replaces the CalMag. Halfway through flower, you switch from Sweet to Mag Sulfur. Sorry, halfway through flower, you switch from CalMag to Mag Sulfur. Yeah, like week four, week five. When the buds are full size and they're starting to ripen, that's when you put Mag Sulfur in. Why? Because the plant always wants Mag, but she wants that cow while she's growing, and she wants that sulfur while she's sweetening up, while she's converting starch into sugar. She wants that sulfur product. That's why I always show you guys, like literally... Like one of the most important pictures in my book is this thing right here. Cal Mag Mag Sulfur. Notice the mag is purple and purple the whole way through. What you really need to think about when you buy products like Cal Mag and Sweet, and in terms of this, uh, we're talking about let's just say Cal Mag and Flora Nectar. So Cal Mag is Cal Mag, Flora Nectar is Mag Sulfur. When you look at CalMag, there's 50 ppm of mag per 350. When you look at mag sulfur, there's 150 ppm of mag per 350. So you get three times the mag, but you don't want the sulfur until you're into flower. All right? Yeah. Well, the shit I got, that Maxi Bloom has <clears throat> CalMag and sulfur in it. So just I was going to run it through all the way until basically week six, week six depending on how they look I don't know I've never grown these I don't know if it's gonna be a nine week or an eight week sometimes I go ten weeks so I don't know when I'm gonna stop but it has all of it in it <clears throat> I'm suggesting that if you use the CalMag you'll get a higher percentage of mag than if you use the nutrient I'm also suggesting that you didn't call me with a problem about nitrogen boron zinc manganese copper iron blood phosphorus, potassium, you didn't call me with any of them. You called me with one specific problem. And I always tell you, the number one problem in a healthy garden is always not enough magnesium. Why? Because magnesium converts sunlight into sugar and gets used up in the process. So it's part of the process of what the whole thing this is about is candy farmer. You're converting sunlight into sugar. You're a candy farmer. And the faster you can turn cannabis into sugar, I got people out my door. I was hoping just to sit here and get high. I got people at the hydro store door. It's time to start my day with my new attitude. I'm gonna sell everything, it all works. Why? Because that grows fantastic bud, because all bud's the same. So what am I doing trying to do a minimal store? All right, listen, I'll be more organized next week because I don't have any video. I've got all this stuff caught up. I will have a replacement mic. I'm gonna punch this fucking mic. So. This is the best I could do. I hope the best you could do is even better. I'm the Grow Boss. Have a peaceful Sunday, my friends. It is a long week coming up, as always. And I thank you for watching. And, you know, if there's anything I can sell you, stop into the store. It's not gonna, it's not gonna play. That was very dramatic. I was going for my music.